So will you filibuster? We'll uh, intend to be aggressive in challenging his nomination, and we'll see how that goes uh, in the weeks ahead. No, Republican Senator Jeff Sessions is not talking about President Obama's controversial nomination of Chuck Hagel to be Secretary of Defense. He is talking about what should be one of the least controversial presidential nominations of all time, because it is the nomination of a, the most fully qualified and always mild-mannered Jack Lew to be Secretary of the Treasury. There is not even one slightly controversial episode in Jack Lew's entire life history, both personal and professional. But Senator Jeff Sessions, who is not even a member of the committee that will very definitely vote to confirm Jack Lew, is trying to make his contr confirmation controversial, perhaps because, among other things, Jeff Sessions still hasn't gotten over the fact that the Senate Judici Judiciary Committee voted against his nomination to be a federal judge in 1986. In the spotlight tonight, the president's new cabinet. Joy Reid, the Jack Lew thing, it doesn't get less controversial than this. And, you know, poor little Jeff Sessions is not going to get to ask him any questions in the confirmation hearing because he ain't on the committee. <laughs> this whole thing is just going to go right past Jeff Sessions. Yeah, this is like confirmation theater. Like, now yeah. we're figuring out that what's really wrong with all these nominees is, darn it, they had the temerity to be nominated by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. They've got the Obama stain on them. How dare they be anywhere near him? You know, the most controversial thing about Jack Lew is his weird signature. There's nothing yes. even remotely controversial right. about this. He will have to offer a new penmanship sample <laughs> yes. to the Finance Committee That's in right. order to get confirmed. Eugene Robinson, uh, you've seen a lot of this confirmation stuff uh, over the years. T take us through what's going to happen with Hegel, which is a trickier thing. Here you mm -hmm. have this Republican nominated uh, as Secretary of Defense, something that Bill Clinton did, a Republican. Uh, and Republicans are going, ah, uh, no, we don't, we don't like this guy. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, his, his former Republican colleagues in the Senate. I think what's going to happen is, is a lot of noise, uh, a lot of complaining, uh, in, 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 but ultimately, I believe he will get through um, simply because he's qualified and he's the president's pick. And I think you've heard uh, not a whole lot of softening, but at least a little bit of softening in the last few days. And uh, I just can't imagine that there's going to be an actual rejection. But they're going to make a lot of noise, um, especially on issues involving Israel. Can we just get something straight about the Secretary of Defense? He doesn't make policy, and Correct. he doesn't make foreign policy. Not in the least. And you have these <laughs> nuts complaining right. about what they think Chuck Hagel might think about Israel, which the President of the United States is never going to ask Chuck Hagel about. Exactly. The, what, what the Defense Secretary does is implement the President of the United States' defense policy. Period. His orders. Exactly. Hey, Mr. Secretary, get us out of Iraq. Hey, Mr. Exactly. Secretary, you know, yeah. Like They're that. acting like it would be the Defense Secretary who would decide that we were going to go to war with Iran or not, when that is not true. Their problem is with Barack Obama. With all these nominees, it comes down to the same thing. Their problem is they can't accept that this man beat his Republican uh, opponent twice in a row and that he gets to make these choices. They want to make the choices for him. And, and Gene, uh, there's nothing funnier in American politics than pretending that that there is anything more than one degree of difference on any issue involving Israel between right. the two parties or between any two politicians in Washington ever. Right. There is no difference, let it the state for the record, that is, Israeli <laughs> right. officials have right. said that, right. that security cooperation, cooperation has never been closer between the United States and Israel than under Barack Obama. It, it is, the policy is, is exactly the same. Um, recall, though, that everybody on the Hill is raising money all the time. And if they think they're, that they're, they can make, uh, perhaps raise mm -hmm. a few more dollars by uh, beating up on the president or trying to beat up on the, on the president, then they will do so. Now, Rush Limbaugh actually has a half-interesting point to make about the Hegel nomination. Let's listen to that now. Obama's going to do it. Obama is going to be the first Democrat to actually cut the defense budget. I shouldn't say cut, dismantle the military. This is more than cutting the budget. That's not the right way to put it. He wants to dismantle the military, just like Western Europe did theirs. 
So get a Republican defense secretary to preside over not defense cuts. This is crucial to understand the distinction. These are not defense cuts. I mean, they are, but that's not... The result of the cuts is the dismantling of the military in order to pay for a growing welfare state. So, Joey, inside that madness, there is an interesting point, which is if you're going to be doing defense cuts, it is helpful to a Democratic president to have a Republican defense secretary justifying and presenting those cuts uh, to Congress and one who himself is a war veteran and a combat hero. Yeah, exactly. Somebody who is going to be popular with the enlisted men and women with the troops mm -hmm. because he's one of them. So he has a credibility uh, with the men and women who are members of the armed forces when he's presenting these ideas. And you know what? Limbaugh's right. There are going to be cuts to the military. But but we may want to remind Rush that his party is the one who also voted for and caused us to have the sequester, which in and of itself has draconian cuts to the military. His party was part and parcel of that. So, Gene, if you're a Republican senator and you want to do the bidding of some defense contractors who are pouring money into your campaign, um, you don't want to go up against Chuck Hagel arguing for the need for the defense, for the spending on your particular project that he, in his own experience in combat, and his own experience as a senator and then as defense secretary believes is unnecessary. You don't want that argument with Chuck Hagel. No, you don't You don't want Chuck Hagel in, in part because he might actually do it. Yeah. Uh, but l l let's put, put what Rush said in, in perspective. These are cuts, and actually they will be cuts, I, I boldly predict, that will still leave the United States spending <laughs> more than like the rest of the world combined yes, on correct. defense. Yes. Uh, it will still leave the United States with no no rival in, in terms of, of, of global defense um, apparatus and capabilities. Uh, so that's just ludicrous uh, dismantling. Eugene Robinson and Joy Reid, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Thank you.